Hey, Jeremy Bennett here. I am the author of Calm Your Mind, Transform Your Life. And in this video, I want to show you why anxiety can occur, how to stop taking things personally, absolute game changer, and how to end an argument dead in its track so you can avoid all the needless torment that comes along with those arguments that shouldn't be happening in the first place. So what is anxiety and why does it happen? You're sitting down watching watching TV, out for a walk, or even driving your car and your heart starts to beat very rapidly. You may even shake and your stomach feels as though it's in knots. These sensations can be anxiety. Why is this happening and can anything be done to reduce this nasty sensation? Millions of people from all around the world suffer from anxiety and overwhelming stress. First and foremost, if you're suffering from any kind of anxiety or overwhelming stress, reaching out for professional help is very important. There are many causes of anxiety and overwhelming stress, and in this video, I'd like to concentrate on our negative thought patterns and how we react to particular situations. You see, anxiety can happen when you're in danger, and anxiety can also happen when you're safe. Before explaining why anxiety can happen when you're safe, let me explain why it can happen when you're in danger. You never want to eliminate anxiety when you're in actual danger. Anxiety is meant to keep you alive when you're in some kind of danger. Let's say you're out in the park for a walk, you turn around and realize there is a huge alligator slowly crawling towards you, ready to pounce upon you. Well, your brain, working as a defense mechanism, commands your adrenal glands to secrete particular stress hormones into your bloodstream. These hormones help prepare the body to either fight the perceived threat or to run away from it. That's why this response is called the fight or flight response. You see, when you perceive a threat, you may experience a rapid heartbeat and you may experience rapid breathing. This is happening to provide the body with the proper amount of energy and oxygen that is needed to either fight or run away. You may begin to tremble because your muscles are becoming tense. The tenseness is priming your body for action. You may even feel like there's a lump in the pit of your stomach because digestion becomes sluggish because the brain knows that digestion is not a priority while you're in danger. The thing is this, if you're in actual danger, let's say a bear is chasing you in the forest, you're certainly not going to be concerned that your heart is beating faster or that you're trembling or that you have a lump in the pit of your stomach. Why? You won't be concerned about these effects of that fight or flight response because you have two major distractions at the time. Number one, the bear, and number two, staying alive. However, when you are completely safe, you're sitting down watching TV, you're out for a walk, or you're driving your car, and then all of a sudden your heart starts to beat super fast. You start to breathe rapidly and shallowly. It's the most terrifying feeling in the world. So why are these same exact side effects of anxiety so terrifying when you're safe? These sensations are so much more terrifying when you're safe because you have absolutely no distractions when you're safe. There is no bear chasing you. There is no alligator ready to pounce upon you. So if you have no distractions, then all of your attention is going to be on your rapid heartbeat, the instantaneous sweaty palms, the shallow breathing. And if all your attention is on the unpleasant side effects of anxiety, it feels as though your body is absolutely out of control. So the obvious question is this. If anxiety is meant to happen for the most part when you're in some kind of danger, why can it happen when you're safe? The answer to this question can profoundly change your understanding of your mind. You see, anxiety can happen when you're safe because the brain tends to react to a vivid thought as if that thought is actually taking place in reality. For example, consider this scenario. Your child is mere feet away from you, completely safe. 
However, if you think about them getting into a car accident, even though you know they're completely safe, you feel off. Maybe you get a strange feeling in your stomach. Why is this happening? It's because the brain tends to react to a vivid thought as if that thought is actually taking place in reality. And the thing is this, the average person has thousands of thoughts every single day. And so many people not only have thousands of thoughts every single day, but so many of these thoughts are either dwelling on something bad in the past or fearing something that could potentially take place in the future. And because the brain tends to react to a vivid thought as if that thought is actually taking place in reality, you can actually enter that fight or flight response because of these thoughts. One major reason why so many people suffer with unneeded anxiety and stress is because they tend to take things personally. For example, if someone doesn't like you for no reason, doesn't like the way you dress, where you come from, your sexuality, or your family, do you know that simply by understanding one eye-opening principle that you can get to a place in your life where you simply stop caring what other people think, or at least care a lot less. In other words, you can ultimately stop taking things personally, and this is an absolute game changer. You can get to this place by understanding the nature of why, why someone is behaving the way they are behaving. You see, the large majority of the time, they simply cannot help but act like that. Let me give you an example. I want you to right now think about your favorite food. Now I want you to snap your fingers and hate that food. Of course, you can't do this. Think about someone you really love right now. Now snap your fingers and stop loving them. You can't. Or think about someone you really despise. And now start to love them. You can't. You're starting to realize it's a lot more difficult than you think. So what's my point? My point is this. When someone doesn't like you, When someone doesn't like the way you dress, your accent, where you come from, they simply cannot change that behavior just by wanting to. Everything they have been exposed to since they had the ability to absorb information is shaping their personality, their tendencies, and reactions to situations. Just like you can't love a food that you hate, they simply cannot change their perceptions of the world just by wanting to. Understanding that most people are simply acting the large majority of the time on autopilot, conditioned by the vast array of prior experiences, helps us to stop taking things personally. When someone doesn't like you for no reason, keep in mind that their behavior and nasty thoughts about you is a reflection of the negativity that they are feeling inside. Well, understanding that someone's negative reaction towards you is typically based upon them being in autopilot mode, shaped by their past experiences, completely take away the discomfort that comes with not being liked? Maybe not entirely, but it sure will help. Remember, when someone has a problem with you, they are the one with the problem, not you. However, the second you allow their negativity to bring you down and take what they're saying personally, then you allow their problem to become your problem. Don't feed them the attention that they're seeking. When they eventually see that their negative thoughts about you are no longer affecting you, chances are they will just move on. The more you practice this technique, the easier it will become, and eventually you'll become a master at it. Another situation that can trigger so much stress and even anxiety in so many people comes from the havoc associated with needless arguments. And did you know that there is a simple yet very effective technique that can end practically any argument just by saying three simple words? And you're going to discover that right now. So before we get into the technique that can stop practically any argument dead in its tracks, let me start by saying there are two types of arguments. The first type of argument is an argument worth arguing over. For instance, let's say your coworker is about to deliver a presentation when you notice she is bleeding from her forehead, a fairly significant wound, but she's still insisting on delivering the presentation. In this scenario, you arguing with her to seek medical attention makes sense. It's a situation worth you arguing over as you are looking out for the well-being of your friend. 
However, then there are the arguments that simply cause so much stress and even anxiety. And the thing is this, they are so mundane, petty arguments that in reality, it doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong. And in fact, the only reason these arguments exist is to give the ego that satisfaction in proving that it knows something that the other person you're arguing with doesn't know. For instance, let's say you're talking with a friend about a particular scene that took place in a movie that you watched a few weeks ago. You're reminiscing about that particular experience when your friend suddenly realizes that what you mentioned about that particular scene was untrue. Well, at least to her. She immediately says that that scene took place, but in an entirely different movie that you both watched months prior to that movie. But you're absolutely sure that you're correct with what you remembered and you vehemently deny what she remembers. Before you know it, you feel tense and you're so annoyed by her accusations that you're incorrect that you're angry now. And this argument, of course, stirs up dormant negative experiences just waiting to be relived again in conversation. In needless arguments, it's crucial to first ask yourself the question, is this argument going to serve me somehow? Is this argument going to serve us somehow? Ask yourself, does it really matter who's right or who's wrong in this scenario? If it doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong, three simple words can stop these arguments dead in its tracks. When you consciously recognize that you are in the middle of an argument not worth fighting over, Simply look at the person who you're arguing with and simply say three simple words. You're probably right. Who would want to argue with you after you just agreed with them? Even if you know deep down that you're right and they are completely wrong, say it anyway. Let them have that win. You'll almost immediately see their ego deflate and what was once on the verge of becoming a full-fledged argument has now settled down into a rational conversation and all that stress and anxiety can simply be avoided by those three simple words. Will it be easy to agree with someone even though you believe you're right and you passionately believe they're wrong? Probably not. But once you do it over and over again, you'll notice that it will become easier. In addition, those who regularly try to argue with you will eventually stop because they know they're not going to get anywhere with you anymore because you're simply going to agree with them. This one technique will save you so many needless headaches down the road. I want to show you another quick trick that can help you calm your mind, even temporarily. Remember, the average person has thousands of thoughts every single day, and a lot of these thoughts are either dwelling on something bad in the past or fearing something that could potentially take place in the future. Remember, the brain has a very difficult time distinguishing between something real and a vivid thought. What is one way of breaking these automatic negative thoughts? A great way to calm your mind, although it takes practice, is to catch yourself when you're thinking negative thoughts. You can break this vicious cycle simply by catching those negative thoughts. For instance, you could be sitting down working on your computer completely consumed by your negative thoughts. You could be so used to this type of thinking that it's nothing unusual. Most people are addicted to thinking, constantly dwelling on things in the past or fearing what could happen in the future. How do you break the cycle? By catching these negative thoughts, by taking these negative thoughts and being conscious of them. The more you practice catching your negative thoughts, the better you become at it and the easier it gets. You may only be aware of these negative thoughts for just a moment, and then your negative thoughts are going to grip your mind. That's okay. Catch them again and again and again and again and break that cycle. It certainly takes practice, but it's worth it. Just like a broken bone can come from many different scenarios, anxiety and stress can originate from many different scenarios. Certainly, stress and anxiety are not only caused by racing thoughts, taking things personally, or needless arguments. However, using these techniques can go such a long way in dealing with these types of situations more effectively and can make a world of difference. 
Anxiety is as real as a broken bone. Reaching out for professional help is so incredibly important. Take that step and reach out. You are so much stronger than you could ever imagine. Please share this video as it just may help someone who could really benefit from this message.